Martina and I will now be demonstrating five tactile instructions for the roll down. So we are starting at the top, at the head. Once Martina has established her optimal body position, elongating the spine, I'm placing my hands to the back and side of her head. So my thumbs are underneath the occiput and the other fingers are placed lightly on the side of her head. Now by lifting up her head, I'm indicating lengthening of the neck first. And then by tilting the head forwards, it's the nodding motion that initiates the roll down. Then I release the lengthening and let Martina balance the head on top of the spine again. We do it one more time. So it's I'm lifting Martina's head just a little bit, thumbs a bit stronger than the other fingers. And then I'm tilting my hands forward, tilting Martina's head forward. That's the nodding action that's opening the suboccipital space and initiates the roll down motion. Beautiful. So we are going down to the rib cage, the second tactile instruction. I'm placing my hands to the side of the rib cage. It's, it's definite. It's not gripping, it's not hard, but it's definite. And then the first thing I do, I'm lifting the side of the rib cage, lengthening the waistlines. So elongating the spine this time in the lumbar and lower thoracic area. Martina initiates a roll down with the nodding she's rolling down and then i feel beautiful pause i feel when the front of the rib cage where i have my fingers is closing so i can just close the front of the ribs a little bit more by sliding my fingers forwards opening the back of the rib cage and you can roll down a little bit further opening the back of the rib cage elongating the beautiful hold this Post the mid back into the lower back. Excellent. So what I have done, I placed my hand around Martina's ribcage like so, and then I was sliding my fingers a little bit closer together, suggesting to close the front of the ribcage, opening the back, and then tilting the hands forwards was opening the back of the ribcage and the, the spine even more. Now I could keep doing that if you roll down to a certain point and then I either have to lessen my hold or I remove my hands. So that brings me down to the third tactile instruction which is at the pelvis. So I'm placing my hand to the side of the pelvis, my fingertips are on the ASIS and then the heel of the hands on the side of the hips. Martina can roll down, so I can suggest a posterior pelvic tilt, beautiful, and then you can pause again, and sometimes that's just enough, that, that the hands on the side of the hips is sufficient. If I want a stronger hold, I'm placing my forearms onto the side of Martina's pelvis, and I'm dropping the elbow, so I can make it a bit stronger without gripping with my hands and then you can roll down. So opening the lumbar area, basically avoiding hip flexion and I'm very much using my forearms to suggest the lift or posterior tilt by sense of the pelvis. Beautiful. And then you can hold again. So force tactile instruction is the initiation of the rolling up motion, which is through the pelvis. So I'm placing my hand onto Martina's sacrum, fingertips pointing up, and just by drawing the heel of the hand down towards the floor, it suggests that the pelvis initiates the rolling up motion and then the spine follows. Beautiful, you can pause again. The last tactile instruction, the fifth, is about the segmental movement of the spine. So either I'm removing my hand on the sacrum or I can turn it around, it's very light touch only. And then with my other hand, I'm walking up Martina's spine, indicating segmental movement of the spine in the rhythm of her movement until she is in a upright and balanced position again.